We're talking Ruby Volume 9 spoilers. If you're not caught up, go get caught up and then come back, please. Cat's out of the bag, for, hey. Hey. For, so to speak. So now we've seen the cat's true intentions. What, what was it like navigating around that? Difficult. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I, I think even starting the, the design and then the writing and the voice acting and everything, people are probably gonna figure out that something's like a little off with the cat. But how do we delay that as much as possible and also make it still feel rewarding? And I'm really happy with how it turned out and Robbie Damon did an amazing job. Oh my God, and so good. Having that, that low moment where, you know, it looks like, okay, the cat's finally coming in to save Ruby one more time time, and then, no, Don't not this time. Uh, I never I, had a cat betray me before. This is the first time I have a cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A cat betraying Lindsay is yeah. the most ironic situation. Yeah. <laughs> Extra cruel is what yeah. that is. I, I, I feel like we put a lot into some of the earlier beats of the cat throughout of like, look, they're only doing positives. They're saving this person. They're helping out here just so that we could point and be like, look, they haven't done anything wrong yet. I still trust them. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and part of it too, it's like, we were okay with the audiences watching it. It's like, oh, this doesn't feel entirely like something's off yeah. here and then John kind of points it out and then making it feel like it ends there. But one of the things we want to do, and now it feels like we can talk about it, right, is to have something that ties this back into what's going on on Remnant and for the cat to reveal that like, oh, wait, the same brothers that made the humans and stuff on Remnant also made the cat. Yeah. Um, and that so that blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think yeah, really early on, people might think this is like a, a filler season or has nothing to yeah. do with Definitely like the main not. plot, but it is <laughs> quite the opposite. One of the most important, yeah. super yeah. not. Yeah. And it, you know, there there's already so many connections, and there's there's more coming too. That you know, deviation does not have to be a filler. I guess. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. yeah. It's always fun too when you know a character goes bad. It's fun to go back and be like, oh, were there ulterior motives yeah. to this earlier yeah. stuff? So it gives you a chance to kind of rewatch yeah. it all. I appreciate that. So this is a very, very low point for Ruby. What was that like for you to see this character that you've you know, grown very attached to hitting probably like the lowest of the lows? Rock bottom has a basement. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, found it. Yeah, genuinely, we already have Ruby uh, has been isolated um, in the Ever After um, from her teammates. We had somewhat of a reunion, but it was very skewed. Um, she could not physically help her team in a lot of ways. So she relied on someone like the cat to guide her through this. So the ultimate betrayal is, oh, this person who I thought I could trust leading me through this whimsy world is actually bad. It's a great and necessary reflection on herself in the moment. Ruby needs to look at that and just stop mm -hmm. trusting people around her. Just trust yourself yeah. for once, <laughs> <Just> for once. <laughs> Early on, we had the idea for, you know, if we're doing an Alice in Wonderland thing, we need like a mad tea party scene, right? And Mad Hatter in this scenario is Neo slash Torchwick. And all, all these people that there's a part of Ruby feels like she failed yeah. or was a part of their demise. And to have them, like, in some senses, like, literally beat it into her, yeah. you know, <laughs> in yeah. the scene, you know, it's, it's really up. tough. It's, it's very, tough yeah, to watch. There, you know, there's a lot of nightmarish things in this episode. The, yeah. the cat and Neo, all that. I mean, we wanted this to be a shift in, 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 the, in the season and, and really get into, okay, we're, you know, coming to the last couple episodes now. Like, the, the tone is going to be shifted a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, and then there's the, the little stomp. Uh, oh. <laughs> that broke my heart too. Watching that, oh yeah. my goodness! There was a couple of times where I was like, "Is this too? Is yeah. this too? Are mean? we allowed to this? Show this? I still don't know. We we, we 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 absolutely put a lot into not making it. The grotesque or making it as as nonviolent as possible, which is hard to imagine. Like it's the whole still, episode is very mean. It, it is. <laughs> yeah. That's what it should be called it the is. mean episode. But I think there's a little bit, of, at least for me, justification of that is is because of how whimsical the season has been up to yeah. this point. Yeah. Is I feel like we kind of needed to set that there were going to be some consequences to this yeah. area. You know, like you can get small and then get big again. But I mean, like if Ruby drinks this tea, like what what's going to happen? Yeah, she's going to the tree. The dark and kind of twisted chapter in the fairy tale. So this is the grim portion of the fairy tale as opposed to the Disney portion yes. of the fairy tale. Yes. Yes. Got it, got it. Yeah. <laughs>